The leader of Iran's Islamic Revolution says that Tehran will push ahead with its defense and missile programs despite the U.S. propaganda campaign. Ayatollah said that Khamenei made the comment while addressing a graduation ceremony of military cadets in Tehran via video conference. Ayatollah Khamenei dismissed as, quote, nonsense talk, the U.S. hue and cry over Iran's defense capabilities. He said such nonsense talk shows that Americans fear Iran's military might. Ayatollah Khamenei added that the U.S. and its allies seek to invade and interfere in countries that lack defense power. The leader also touched upon the U.S. sanctions on Iran, saying the nation will continue to resist these measures. البته نقش خباست آمریکا رو نباید نادیده گرفت این تحریم های خباست آمیز اینا جنایت یعنی به معنای واقعی کلمه حالا ما مقاومت میکنیم ما میستیم و ان این فشار حد اکثری او به روسیایی حد اکثری آمریکا منتهی خواهد شد این کارو ما خواهیم کرد به توفیق الهی که او رو پشیمان میکنیم از این کار Ayatollah Khamenei added that Iran will overcome its economic problems and use U.S. sanctions as a tool to strengthen its economy. He also slammed claims by U.S. President Donald Trump about disrupting Iran's economy, saying that only scoundrels take pride in such atrocity. Let's go back to one of our headlines regarding uh, what Iran's leader has said in his statements today. Said Hosseini is a political analyst who joins us from uh, Johannesburg. Welcome. Uh, Iran's leader has made some statements, um, and one of the things he said is that the, the U.S. will never achieve its goals in terms of having any type of control uh, when it comes to Iran's missiles and defense capabilities. Um, uh, tell us how the U.S. has failed in that arena, especially given the fact that just recently it was unable to gather any type of international support when it comes to uh, the sanctions that it wanted the U.N. to reimpose uh, or bring back on Iran to limit it or to stop Iran from purchasing any type of military equipment? Well, um, when you're fighting with someone, the first rule is to de-weaponize the person whom you are fighting. If he has a knife or a sword or, or even a stone in his hand, the first aim and objective of the opposition is to take that weapon which is in the hand of the other person, your opposition. And that's exactly what is happening between us and the United States. In Iran and the United States, there is a conflict. This is not new. It started uh, from about 100 years ago. And up, up to now, it, has continued, and I, I, and I don't think with the, the type of uh, administrations that we have in the United States, it's going to end up soon. So the first aim and objective of them is to get the weapon that you have. Then they don't need to fight with you. They just come and occupy you because you don't have anything. Look, um, the, this negotiation, which it, it is not something new. They negotiated with Saddam Hussein, and Saddam Hussein has, uh, you know, actually gave them whatever he had in his position. But still, in the name of weapon of mass destruction, they invaded the uh, Iraq and occupied it. They negotiated with Gaddafi the same uh, situation. He actually destroyed every capabilities that he had. When he didn't have anything to defend himself, then what is happening today in Libya? They want to repeat the same scenario in Iran. Get what Iran has, then attacking to Iran will be much easier. So that is exactly the point of this and life for Islamic Republic. And uh, that's why I think Supreme Leader today he is mentioning about this type of this and life situation for Islamic Republic, because if we are strong, if we are the superpower in the region, if they are ready to negotiate, if they are begging us to come into the table and talk to them, it's because we are powerful. And as soon as you are not powerful, the ability of your negotiation is also coming down. And that is why Iran is necessary to get as much as strong as possible, that even if it is a negotiation table someday, 
then you go there from power point of view, not from weak, weak point of view. Thank you very much for that, Sehoseni, political analyst there from Johannesburg. Many thanks.